Hey, everybody. Welcome to Leading with Gratitude Live. I'm your host, Chester L., the Apostle of Appreciation. I'm coming to you from the new Gratitude Virus Epicenter of the Planet Summit, New Jersey. You know, you give us uh, 30 minutes, we'll give you great information, great inspiration, and your own personal roadmap to create a culture of gratitude where you work and where you live. And it's broadcast on all our fun platforms from Facebook to LinkedIn to uh, YouTube. And it's brought to you by the amazing people on the Methods Network. Well, today our, our guest is the remarkable, the affable, the engaging Jake Reynolds. He's the president of the New Jersey NHL hockey team, the Devils, my team, as you can see. So let me tell you a little bit about Jake and we'll get to it. Jake is the president of the New Jersey Devils. He oversees the business operations and strategy for Harris Blitzer Sports and Entertainment, HBSE, for the three-time Stanley Cup winning franchise, the New Jersey Devils. During his seven years as an executive with HBSE's marquee franchise properties, the New Jersey Devils and the 76ers, Jake established himself as an industry leader in sales, corporate culture, and innovation in front office analytics. Jake's been a key architect in some of the most innovative initiatives, including the 76ers and StubHub's groundbreaking ticket platform, the first time that live events and industry could provide consumers access to primary and secondary tickets. In 2019, and I love this part, he was the recipient of Sports Business Journal's renowned 40 Under 40. It honors Jake as being selected from an international pool of senior industry executives and leaders in sports and acclaimed one of the great leaders under 40 years old. Prior to his roles at HBSE, Jake held senior management positions in Monumental Sports and Entertainment, where he oversaw sales and retention efforts for the Washington Wizards, the Capitals, the Mystics, Georgetown men's basketball, and early in his career, he was with the Indiana Pacers and the New York football giants. A native of Salt Lake City and graduate of Utah Valley University, he is the proud father of three of the cutest little girls you will ever see. He's my friend. He's my inspiration. His name is Jake Reynolds. Jake, welcome to the show. Chester, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And thank goodness my three girls look like their mother and not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they got their mother's hair at least, right? Well, listen, as you yeah. know, I'm a huge Devils fan. I'm wearing my jersey. I've got my cap. And, I, you know, you and I have been to 100 games together. But tell me a little bit about your journey to becoming president of the New Jersey Devils. I mean, how cool is that? Uh, it's It's been pretty incredible. And, and for me, it started off at an early age. I was, I was fortunate. I was the youngest of kind of five siblings. And uh, my older sister, who was 13 years older than I was, uh, got involved in the sports business right out of school. So I had some exposure to it early on. I knew that was kind of the career path I wanted to go down. It's combining kind of two things I was incredibly passionate about, which was business and sports. So being able to combine those two things was, was something really unique and, and special. So being able to kind of start in, in the career and, and in this industry right out of school, uh, I've had the opportunity to, to work with Indiana Pacers, the New York Giants, Monumental Sports, the Sixers, the Devils, um, some pretty incredible brands in some pretty incredible cities. And I've been pretty fortunate to work for some incredible leaders who, who have really helped me along the way, propel me, challenge me, invest in me, and, and put me on a path to, to get to where I am today. But uh, to be in this position, to, to be the president of, of a team that I am as passionate about as, as I am the Devils, uh, it's pretty fun to wake up every morning and sprint to work. It really is. And, you know, you and I have talked about this before. The thing I love about the New Jersey Devils is they're the New Jersey Devils, right? They're the only sports branch in New Jersey that will admit that they play in New Jersey. Oh, the Jets and the Giants play in New Jersey, but they're the New York Jets and Giants, right? Or even the, the, even the uh, Red Bulls. I mean, they play in Harrison, New Jersey. Come on, man, own it. <laughs> so as a, as, a, as a New Jersey, and I love the fact that you're the NJ Devils. And that's, that's a big part of your brand, isn't it? It is. And we take quite a bit of pride in terms of having New Jersey across our, our crest. And it is something that, that is unique. And, and you look at kind of the New York and New Jersey market, and there are 11 professional sports teams. Um, there's a tremendous amount of 
pride and passion for for sports in this area, obviously. Um, but to be unique and to be the ones, the only ones that have New Jersey across our chest is, is something unique and it's something special and it's something that we leverage and tap into and kind of really use that opportunity to kind of galvanize the communities around us. That is so great. So everybody's sequestered, right? We're all quarantined. And I always like to ask, so what have you been doing during your quarantine? And you've had a couple of pretty great projects, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's it certainly kept me on my toes. And uh, there's, there's been different waves as we've been going through the, the last month or so. Uh, first and foremost, as you mentioned before, I've got three daughters, 10, 7, and 4. So they have certainly kept me on my toes and, and have kept me busy kind of throughout this. Uh, thank goodness for my wife. She is a real life superhero and a rock star kind of uh, holding our, our entire family and entire house down. Uh, she's been incredible, but uh, it's been it's been a pretty fun process. The, the first two weeks of this is imagine were a little chaotic and a little hectic for us as um, we we're kind of figuring out what this meant for our business, for our world, for our fans, for our players obviously for, for our employees. My first two weeks were about 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. I was on calls and video conferences nonstop. Um, but for the last two and a half weeks, it's, it's been nice to, to be able to kind of take a step back, get into a little bit of a rhythm and, and routine with, with work, and then especially with, with my family. And it's a unique time, and, and we've said this as a family quite a bit during this time. It's like, we wanna take this opportunity to create and make memories for, for us and Excellent. for our family. So. We've started a lot of new family yeah. traditions. Uh, we're having a family game night. My wife and I started the quarantine cup where we're keeping a running total of, of all of our game nights. <laughs> and, and uh, so there will be a champion that is crowned at, at the end of this, but uh, I've been doing some home projects like the Jersey wall you can see behind me, um, as well as I think there was something that flashed up there and in terms of my passion and addiction to shoes. There you go. Yeah, uh, your sneaker uh, closet. <laughs> I love that. I love that. It's a problem. It's a problem. It's a problem. Well, listen, to, tell, me, tell me a little bit about uh, your, yeah. The, the, tell me a little bit about the, the business thing. I mean, how do you how do you keep your people engaged? You know, they're, they're game day people, and there's no games. How are you going about that to to make sure that people are prepared when the games come back that they're fully engaged? Yes. So that's, that's kind of been a, a critical focus for, for myself and for, for us as an organization is we have been kind of moving through this. One is looking at, okay, how are we engaging our fan base? How are we engaging our employees? How are we engaging our players? And, and more importantly, how are we using the power and the platform that sports provides to, to be able to, to kind of bring people together? Um, but with our, our group internally, uh, it's been a combination of, of a lot of things. And at the very beginning of this, about three days in, when we realized, okay, this is, you know, this is going to last for a while. Uh, I issued a challenge out to our entire organization where I said, if there are four things that you can do every day, like I think you will lay your head down at the end of the night and say that was an impactful day and, and today meant something. And there were kind of four key pillars and challenges that I gave everyone on a daily basis. And, and the first one was connect. And so using this time, especially in, in the sports and entertainment business and industry, and when we're in season, we are working nonstop and, and we are going from the moment we wake up until the game ends and, and thereafter. So take advantage of this opportunity and the time that we have to connect with people. Um, we no longer have that as an excuse that we're too busy. And I know in, in your book, Chester, I, I love it leading with gratitude. There's a section in there where it's just there isn't enough time. And, and too often that is an excuse and it shouldn't be. It's, it's not a time problem, it's a priority problem. And so can we use this time to make connecting with other people a priority and build that habit back into our lives and not let that alter, but take the time to connect with different people, friends, family, partners, colleagues, you name it. And so that, that was one piece. The second one was around intellect. And can you do something every day to help stimulate your mind and stimulate your brain? Whether that is reading a book, shout out, leading with gratitude, uh, whether that's reading articles, listening to podcasts, like what are you continuing to, to do to make sure that you're learning and you're staying sharp? And the third piece was Excellent. development. And how do you develop a new skill or you know, take this time as, as an opportunity to purposefully kind of hone a, a skill set that you want to develop or that 
you, you may just be a little rusty and taking the time to, to really develop that is, is important. And then the last one is exercise. Like how do we stay healthy during this time, whether it's eating the right thing, getting out and being active, going for a walk around your neighborhood, um, but really taking advantage of this opportunity that we have to either get healthy or stay healthy and really start to develop and um, create those habits for us that when we come out of this, they are just such a natural part of our life that, that they kind of continue on. So that was a challenge I, I had issued early on. And then, you know, we, we've had plenty to, to kind of keep us, um, to keep us busy, whether it's contingency planning for, you know, when the season does return, what are the different scenarios that we may be returning to and, and what does that look like and how can we ensure that we are well prepared and well out in front of this. So when that time comes, we're not just getting back to games, but we're getting back and we're putting on a show at a world-class um, elite level. And so making sure that we are prepared for that. And then there's a lot of fun things too that, that we're doing for, for both employees and staff. So uh, I'm hosting a town hall every week on Zoom um, where I'm giving business updates to people. I'm also bringing in players. So I've had Travis Zajac come on, I've had Connor Carrick. Uh, we're hosting one at four o'clock today where PK Subban is gonna be my guest. Uh, and we're going to give our staff an opportunity to be able to just pick their brains and, and have a Q&A session for a half an hour with, with some of the players on our team just to, to get a different perspective in terms of, of what is going on. But for the most part, it has been around like how do we just create structure and give people support and resources um, to, to be able to continue to, to progress during this time that we have. You know, that's awesome. I, I love the way you're addressing, you know, the emotional, stay connected, the intellectual, you know, how you're stimulating your mind, skill building, right? And 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 then those 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 really uh basic connect or, or physical, you know, are you staying in shape? I mean, your brand is is athletes. You know, I, I love that you're holding these town uh, town hall meetings and you mentioned PK Subban. You know, the great thing about PK is he really does connect with the community. I know he's got that blue line group where he brings in, you know, police officers from from Newark and, and he gives up his seats. He's got four great seats there. Tell me how important that is for, for you and your brand and your community uh, at, you know, at the Devils to be integrated with the community, which is which is Newark. How, why is that so important? No, no question. And, and we're really fortunate and it's unique to have the platform that we do have with sports. It, it is about community. And when we talk about what is our purpose and what is our why, it is bringing people together and it is uniting the communities that we live in and bringing people together and helping make a difference. And, and we look at that as an obligation that we have as something that is as visible as the NHL and the NBA to be able to utilize that platform to really help make a difference. And so we do a number of things um, kind of throughout the year to, to ensure that um, every employee, when they start at the Devils, commits to serving 82 hours of community service every year. And, and that is something that we track and, and we keep people posted on, on how they're progressing. Um, we shut down the office at least once a quarter. And as an entire staff, we go out together and just serve in the community. Um, for, for us, it is actually being able to kind of bring all that together. And, and we're fortunate in, you know, even in times of crisis, it's that much more important to be able to step up, but it doesn't just, it's not just in those times. Like we, we look at this as a year round opportunity and obligation for us. And when you do get into a situation like this, um, it's we're really fortunate that we have incredible leaders. Josh Harris and David Blitzer are our two managing partners. Scott O'Neill, our CEO, they're so committed and invested in this. Uh, during this time, we we really leaned in and, and kind of focused on on a few key areas. And one of those is how do we help keep people fed, and how do we feed people? And and through contributions um, from our managing partners in our organization. Uh, we've been able to feed over 200,000 families during this time. Um, wow. And then the second, second pillar we're really looking at is the healthcare and frontline workers. Like, how do we continue to provide support for them? So we partnered with RWJ Barnabas here in, in New Jersey um, to be able to, to provide some significant monetary donations to, to help them. Uh, but we we're also able to donate um, 10,000 gloves, 7,000 masks, um, to, to be able to just kind of help lean in and do our part. And then the last piece is like, how do we help children learn? Um, and especially in, in the communities that, that surround us, um, some people need more help. And, and 
an opportunity in a crisis like this provides an opportunity for us to be able to lean in and, and make a difference. So uh, we've been able to, to donate through our managing partners 11,000 Chromebooks to schools and students in need to be able to give them an opportunity to continue to learn at, at a high level during this time. Eleven thousand. That I mean, that's that that's that's a big number. And by the way, speaking of numbers, people are going to say eighty-two hours. Why eighty-two? What's the significance of eighty-two? Great question. So, New Jersey Devils came to New Jersey in nineteen eighty-two, and so that is that is a year that is obviously significant for for us as an organization. And so, where we can tie into to our heritage and and kind of create that connection. Uh, it's, it's a fun little way to, to put a big number out there that can make a really big difference. You know, you, you brought up something else that I think is so important. The thing about sports that creates these incredible memories and these moments. You know, one of the great things about the Prudential Center or the Rock, as we call it, right, is that it's always in like the top three or four venues in the nation as far as a great experience. Your staff, when I go to games, they are so engaging. They are so upbeat. And, and that is not by chance. You take great pride in creating those experiences at the stadiums, don't you? How do you do that? It's you, We do. And, and we're really fortunate. We're really unique. And, and obviously, I, I have a sense of bias here. But like when you walk into the Prudential Center, like we had a saying, like, we want this to feel like home. And, and we want you to feel like you're walking into your living room. And that goes from everything from how clean it is to just what the experience is, your interactions with, you know, whether it's our guest service people, our ushers, like when you walk in, they feel like family. And one of my favorite things is to watch our season ticket members and the fans engage and interact with our guest services um, members because they become friends and they become yeah. like family. And that is really, really important. And they are a part of who we are as an organization. They're part of our brand and they represent our culture. And so, you know, I think one of the one of the more difficult things during this time was obviously when a season gets put on pause and we're not playing any games and we don't have any concerts, there were a lot of individuals who rely on on those as, as part of their income and, and being able to feed their families and, and provide for their families. So when that is not going on, it, it takes away an opportunity for those individuals to work. And um, I mentioned some of the things we're doing as an organization before. The other one that I'm really proud of that, that we've done is we, we have been paying all of our guest services and our part-time employees um, during this time and have committed to continue to pay them through May 15th um, for a little over, over two months where there were no games just because they are that important to us. And, and they are a part of this family is, is HBSE and the Devils. Um, but our fans and our season ticket members also look at them as friends and family. So um, being able to create that type of environment and that type of culture where everyone is is invested and believes in what we're doing and, and kind of the bigger purpose of this isn't just sports. This is about community. Um, it, it makes a difference and, and it ties everyone together. It's awesome. You know, it's really interesting. You know, I haven't grown up in Canada, you know, ice hockey for me and NHL hockey. It's it's not it's not, you know, a religion. It's like way more important than that. And uh, I always joke with people. I said, look, the only people that don't love NHL hockey are people that have never gone to a live NHL hockey game with me and you. <laughs> Because it is a it phenomenal is experience. It is just so much fun. I tell people, look, hockey, it's it's fast. It's way faster than people think. It's way more skilled than you can imagine. And it's yeah. violent. It's fast. It's skilled. It's violent. It's, it's the perfect trifecta. Well, let me ask you, Jake, on a personal note, what do, you, what do you miss most about not having games? What is it for you personally that you miss the most? That, I mean, it's, we, we talked a little bit about it, but it is, it's the sense of community. Like when, when you walk into the arena and you see so many familiar faces that, that have been there and that are there, 41 nights a year like that's that's special the type of connection that you can build with people and the other things are, are the small things like I, I love the anticipation leading into a game and the buzz just kind of starting to build and it starts to crescendo as puck drops and then just kind of the roar of the crowd when we actually score a goal and you see people jumping up and down you and I high-fiving as as much as we possibly can <laughs> You feel part of it. When when the Devils score a goal, you're handing out high fives to anybody and everybody around you. So 
Now, we may not have to do that in terms of elbows or, or bows or, or come up with, with right. new, new ways to together coming out of this. Um, but it is, it's just that sense of community and, and bringing everyone together uh, and the amount of pride that, that we put on. And you know, I think one of the things that, that is unique is, is you look at some of the challenges that, that we've gone through and some of the crises we've gone through as a country, you, know, you have 9-11, you have 2008, you have Hurricane Katrina. You know, these are isolated incidents in, in specific cities. They're certainly felt throughout the entire country. But with this one, this is unique because this is impacting everybody across the country. So um, for us to be able to kind of use this, this time to just bring everyone together and provide that escape that, that sports provides people, that's why it's so powerful because it has an ability to unite different people from different backgrounds and different cultures. And then the other big piece is it provides an outlet and an escape for, for people. So not being able to, to be able to provide that necessarily in terms of game form right now is, is challenging. But uh, I give our, our marketing teams and, and our content team a tremendous amount of credit in terms of their efforts and what they have been doing to kind of keep our fans engaged during this time and still provide that, that outlet and escape for them. Um, it's been pretty impactful to see whether it's we're literally running simulated games from NHL 20 on PlayStation and, and Xbox, and <laughs> we're broadcasting those uh, over the internet. We have 60,000 people tune in to view one of our simulated video games, oh um, which is incredible. But you, you start to think about the impact that we have and the escape that sports provides. Um, you know, my Twitter feed, I was getting videos of fans sending videos and pictures of their kids watching these games and, and saying, thank you for providing the first sense of normalcy that we've been able to have um, during this quarantine. Yeah. Time. And that makes sports so unique and so special is, is that that ability to, to, to bring people together, to provide that escape and, and to provide a sense of normalcy during times like this. Excellent. Well, we're we're coming to the uh, the half hour here. So we're going to do rapid fire here right now. I mean, ask you a bunch of questions and I just want you to, you know, First and foremost, have you ever painted your face in the New Jersey uh, Devils logo? Uh, I have not yet, but that that is coming, I'm sure. <laughs> Excellent. By the way, I will tell fans that when you go back to the stadium, uh, talking about, you know, everybody's going to want to know, is it cleaned? It's already am amazingly clean. The Prudential Center, you guys do such a great job in keeping that clean. Uh, secondly, you brought it up. Uh, you know, can you tell us, are there going to be games? Are we going to finish the season? Are we going to have a Stanley Cup champion this year? That That is the billion dollar, million dollar question, right? Um, and we, I will tell you, we've, I've been on the, I've had the opportunity to be on calls with um, both commissioners from the NBA, the NHL, trying to understand what is the landscape, what are the different scenarios, and us being able to return. I think first and foremost, and, and you just mentioned it, is like it's the safety, and and we want to ensure that when we do walk back in, it is at an elite level, a world class level in terms of kind of the cleanliness, the sanitation, and the safety, and so. That is, is kind of first and foremost. So we're continuing to kind of just keep track as, as everybody is on kind of how this is, is progressing and in, in the containment of this. Um, but I'm, I am itching to get back into the arena to be surrounded by, by the Devils fans. But uh, in doing so, we want to make sure that, that obviously everyone is, is safe. But uh, the leagues are so far out in front of this and, and they've been on top of this and they've been looking at every different scenario. And uh, we're really fortunate to have leadership at the league levels that we do with with Gary Bettman and, and Adam Silver kind of leading the way. Um, but I, I am looking forward to getting back into the rock and, and being surrounded by all the Devils fans. Yeah, me too. You know, that cold air off the ice, there's nothing like it. OK, three things that you've learned during this crisis, three takeaways so that leaders that are listening to this can, you know, can can learn from your experience. What what wisdom would you pass on? Three things. Go. Yes. Uh, communicate, communicate, and then over communicate. Um, if you feel like you're over communicating, then you're doing it right. And so I think that is is critical, important. And it goes from everything from keeping people informed as to just updates and transparency around the business. Uh, important for us, is like checking in on your people. How are they doing personally? Um, everybody's in a different scenario. Everyone's in, in a different situation. Some people are surrounded by, you know, older kids, younger kids. Some people are empty nesters. Some people live alone. Um, but this is impacting and affecting everyone differently. And so you talk about it in your book, Chester, in terms of tailoring, um, you know, gratitude to people individually. 
it's the same type with, with leadership. Like you have to lead people individually in terms of how it impacts and resonates with them. So I think that has been number one. Uh, number two is it's all about perspective. Um, and, and my brother taught me this lesson a, a very long time ago through challenging times and a crisis like this, how important and critical it is to keep the right perspective. And you watch the news, you see some of the things going on, and it's really easy to get sucked into the negativity. But keeping the perspective of, of all the amazing things and, and an appreciation and the gratitude for everything that, that we have going up, going for us in, in this world is absolutely critical. And then the third piece for, for, for me is managing, coaching, and leading. Um, those are oftentimes bucketed as, as the same skill set. But those are very, very different skills. And so you obviously you have managing people, you have being able to coach and develop people, then you have leading people. And, and during a time like this and a time like crisis, people want to be led. Um, they want to know that, that someone has their best interests in, in, at heart and they want to follow someone. And so being able to step up in this time, no matter what your capacity is, whether you're the president of, of an organization, whether you're a manager or whether you just started two weeks before this, this provides an opportunity for everyone to step up in a leadership role and be able to, to help and support those around them. Excellent. And then we ask every one of our guests in you know 20 seconds or less, where did you find your gratitude today? We have a hashtag find your gratitude. We post it everywhere. Where did you find your gratitude today, Jake? Uh, today and every day, I will say it's it's my wife and, and my kids. Uh, my wife for, for what she is doing and, and kind of how she is continuing to keep this household sane and on track and just managing our, our lives and especially homeschooling. Um, an incredible shout out to all the teachers, by the way, having experienced this. Um, they, they are incredible what they do every day. Um, and then the time that I have with, with my kids. Uh, I don't know that I'll ever have a, a situation like this again. So taking the opportunity to make memories and, and create something really special in and around this um, is fun and unique. And, and one of the things we started doing a, as a family um, uh, a while ago, but we've obviously kept up and put more emphasis during this time is, is we have a family gratitude journal. So every night awesome. we as a family, we sit down, everyone has their journals and we, we talk yeah. about three different things that, that we are grateful for for that day. Excellent. Well, he's Jake Reynolds. He's the president of the NHL New Jersey Devils. I've got my championship replica ring that I'm wearing here. I get my cap. Go Devils, go Devils. Thanks for all you're doing for the community and for your workers. Those stories are remarkable, Jake. Thanks so much for being on the show. Esther, you are the best. If you haven't picked it up yet, leading with gratitude, buy a copy, read it, give it to everyone you know. <laughs> it's important enough. You're the best. You got it. Well, listen, uh, tune in to our next show. We've got the amazing Martin Lindstrom. He's coming to us all the way from Australia. He's one of the greatest marketing minds ever. You're going to learn all kinds of things about how to build your personal brand, how to build your business while we're going through the COVID-19 pandemic. Join us for another 30 minutes of information, inspiration, and your own personal roadmap to develop a culture of gratitude at work and at home. And by the way, a shout out to our amazing partners at the Methods Network, where they broadcast on all the platforms. And I always want to give a big shout out to Brent Klein, the world's greatest online producer of things that are good. So people be out there grateful that you joined the show. Be grateful, be kind, and be good to everybody because everybody's having a tough day. See ya. Same bat time, same bat channel. Looking forward to spending another 30 minutes of gratitude with you again soon. Take care, everybody. Wash your hands. Cheers. We're out.